Them's the rules. If someone asks you to rev, you rev. Even if you have a box stop exhaust and two cylinders. Thanks guys, see you later. On her phone. Yo, what is up guys? It has been a while, uh, but I am back from Vietnam after riding motorcycles in Ha Giang, which was amazing. And uh, a video will be posted about that when I get around to editing all the footage. So today we're going to talk about whether riding a motorcycle is easy. Can anyone do it? Um, and I'm sure many of you who haven't yet ridden uh, have this question and are looking for an answer. So I'm going to use my own experience to inform the answering of this question. And this will also serve as a bit of an eight month riding update from me. So let's start with how I began. When I was a young fella, uh, I was very much into my cars and motorcycles. It's something I've kind of always had in my DNA. I was born with it really. That then translated obviously into gaming, um, which it would for a lot of young car enthusiasts out there. So I was big into my Forza, Burnout Paradise, Need for Speed, you name it. Any uh, franchise that was big and on the console I was, I was a fan of. What that meant was I actually had a pretty firm grasp on what a manual transmission was. I, I had an understanding of what I had to do, what everything should sound like, and uh, why there was a third pedal. Or in this case, an extra lever. Hey, look at that. What is that? SV650? Maybe? In 2011, I think it was, I was barely a teenager. Barely. And I got the opportunity to ride my cousin's 180cc motorcycle in Sri Lanka. Uh, and in a matter of a day or two, I had it down pat. The concept of balancing the motorcycle, changing gears, braking, all of that. It all made sense. I knew I was hooked from the moment I rode that bike. I knew that someday I would have one. And that brings me to about four years ago. Um, my, my mate Lockie, who you've seen on this channel with his Mark 6R and his CBR 650F, the sun sets out on my silhouette drum sets pound to the sound of my filament deep to what Lockie wanted to do was a pre-learners course before he actually did his learners so that was a hundred bucks and it was a you know I think it was like three or four hours and we got to hop on the bikes and see if we could ride them it's like I'd never forgotten from those two days I spent back in Sri Lanka all those years ago it just felt natural it's something you don't really forget then about a year or two later I got the opportunity to sit on and ride Zenith's MC22. That was an interesting experience, I'm not going to lie. Obviously it was done outside of a course um, and I was just kind of given the opportunity to hop on it and take it down the street. Um, but it was shaky, I didn't feel as confident, maybe because I was nervous, because it was a friend's bike. Uh, I probably didn't feel as confident because it wasn't, you know, near a supervisor unlike the pre-learners course. And it was a 250. Uh, at the pre-learners course, we were given the opportunity to ride 125 cc's, which is, as many of you would know, akin to riding a BMX bike. They are tiny. And I think the biggest reason I felt kind of uncomfortable was it was just a completely different style of a bike. It was a... The MC22 is a... It's a super sport bike. It's got clip-ons, the rear sets are high, and it's got a really aggressive riding position compared to 
the naked bikes, the 125 and the 180 that I had previously ridden. Uh, but with all that being said, I was still able to ride it up and down and again fueled my lust for two wheels. And then somehow I managed to convince my dad to uh, rekindle his passion for motorcycles and get into it, he did. Um, while I was out looking for bikes, he found an absolute beater of a Ninja 250. Uh, and he got a really good deal on it. You know, we got it delivered to our house, a working, functioning motorcycle um, that we could both ride. And that's kind of what we practiced on out in our backyard. <laughs> oh, my. oh boy, there she is. Why is it going to look so good? I'm talking too much about the uh, the journey I took and less about answering the question. Pretty much all of that build up was I got to my learner's license or my learner's permit test, the two day course. Again, go watch the video about it if you haven't already and uh, if you're curious. But I had no issues at all. It was easy. It was simple. Um, I had gotten the opportunity to ride a motorcycle quite a bit at this stage um, at low speed uh, which is all you need for the motorcycle course and all I had to worry about was memorizing the rules and the theory but the practical side of it not on not an issue at all had it down pat I cannot explain the amount of adrenaline that was coursing through my veins when I first took my bandit out on uh, my maiden solo voyage after getting my learner's permit. It is this feeling of intoxication that I hadn't experienced before in my life, but it's, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game. You know, I went from not really getting out of gear to riding under the speed of 40k an hour and suddenly I'm on the road and you're talking much higher speeds, much more at stake uh, and you're dealing with other drivers, you're sharing it with everyone else um, and that's when it stops becoming easy. Suddenly riding a motorcycle isn't just about balancing and uh, getting from gear one to gear two and back down again. Uh, there is so much more to it. Um, they seem to think that once you've gotten your license, uh, the work's kind of done. But once you've once you've gotten your license, your work's only just begun. Your journey's just begun. The hardest part has just begun. The part that requires the training. The part that requires the discipline. So you've just got to train yourself over and over again to make all your roadcraft uh, part of your subconscious routine. The actual mechanics of hopping on, balancing a bike, I'd say pretty much, you know, 95% of the population can achieve it. And you shouldn't worry too much about your, your learner's permit or your check ride, anything like that. Those, those are easy. It's what happens after. It's what happens when you get complacent, when you don't have to worry about your assessments anymore. That's where the risk really is, and that's where the difficulty lies in riding a motorcycle, in my opinion. I've, uh, I've now shown a few of my friends and my family how to ride, and literally out of, I think, like six or seven people, only one person ended up dropping it. Everyone else got the hang of it just fine. I think it's pretty, yeah, pretty simple. Out of every course I went to, the pre-learners, the learner's license and the check ride, there were very few people who had any issues at all. Everyone seems to get the hang of it. So, if your question is, is riding a motorcycle easy before you get your license? Yes. Go get on a mate's bike and figure out the basics, the controls on how to ride a motorcycle but it's the stuff that comes after you've gone and got your license. That is when the real struggle begins. It's really easy to get your license and breathe out a sigh of relief. Think you've made it, get complacent, 
and uh, unfortunately put your life on the line unnecessarily. It's already a risky enough business riding a motorcycle, but uh, riding a motorcycle when you're complacent and not really thinking about it, that is how, uh, it's how you get yourself killed. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate all the support um, my current 47 subscribers have given me. Uh, each and every one of you mean the world to me. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will catch you on the next one. You say you've got them guns, but I've never seen you bang. You say you've got them drugs, but I've never seen you slang.